what's up youtube and welcome to a brand new video in this editing video i am going to be showing you how i worked on this image in capture one and got this final result here um, this image has also gone through photoshop to do some extra cleanup but in this particular video i'm going to be showing you the things that i then did in capture one and capture one only so um hope you enjoyed the video let's get into it okay so the first thing we have to find out here is that if you look at the top left part of this image and you press the reset button you see it's grayed out meaning this is exactly how this image was shot nothing has been done to it it's exactly how it was shot so the first thing i usually do with my images is to color correct and i use white balance to color correct it's very important that if you're going to color grade an image you have to color correct it first and color correction most times mean that you are trying to make it look as it's supposed to be in real life if that makes sense now i try to shoot as well as i can in camera which means that this particular image doesn't need any kind of color correction at least to my own taste but normally what i would do is go to white balance here and then play around with the sliders put the tint and the kelvin so i could make it a bit cooler if it was too warm or i could make it a bit you know green if i find like there's too much magenta in it but i like the colors in this image and it look natural to me so i'm going to leave them the way they are the next thing i'm going to do is apply one of my presets to this image if you want a link to this is in the description below it's quite affordable uh, i'm just going to go to my styles here my style tab here and then look for styles and presets now if you can't find your styles and presets all you need to do is right click and say add tool and then just scroll and look for styles and presets and then you have one of those on your screen so i'm just going to go back to this one here and i'm going to go to custom styles because custom styles is where um styles that you either downloaded or saved are so click that i'm going to go to Genite styles which is where my own personal styles are and i'm going to go all the way to film now film is the tool that or the color grading technique that i use or the color grading style rather that i use to process this image i'll right click on it and say apply to new layer now there are two ways to apply this you could either just click on it so i'll show you what that looks like i could just go to film and then click on film and you can see it's applied but there is no separate layer with that style applied so i'm going to uncheck it again and then this time i right click and say apply to new layer now the advantage this gives me is that it gives me the option to then edit or make adjustments to the style as i like in this case i'm just going to bring down the opacity a bit and bring it down to about 70 percent okay so this is what we have currently the next thing i want to do is adjust the background a bit if you look in the final image you see that the background is a bit greener and i like that because it then matches with her skin tone or it complements her skin tone well as opposed to this one here so to do that all i need to do is select the background select the background is easy now in capture one you just go to your layers and masks here and click on background when you do that you give it a few seconds for it to do its magic and then the background is selected to see your selection all you need to do is press m and then you can see exactly your selection and it's done a pretty decent job okay so next thing i'm going to do is go to my color tab here and go to a tool called color balance and you can either be in shadows midtones highlights or master i'm going to stay in master here and i'm just going to take this slider up all the way here to somewhere around this yellow yellow tint i'm just going to increase increase the power output a bit and as you can see as i increase it you can see that it changes the background if i go back to my layers um, and you can see the background mask here. if i turn this off and on you can see what it has done to the background okay so next thing i'll do is to crop the image i just press c for crop right click and then crop it to four by five and then just come all the way down like this and this is what we have currently okay all right so i am now going to try and fix the eyes a little bit there's a bit of redness in the eye and i want to make that go away so to do that under my layers and mask here i'm going to go to a tool called people and click this little dot or you know drop down arrow here and make sure i select sclera and uncheck every other thing so i create that mask and when you press m you can see that it has selected the white part of the eyes okay i'm going to modify this mask by pressing e for eraser right clicking and reducing opacity and flow and i just want to make sure that the edges are not too defined i just want to blur out the edges a little bit like this in this part here and in this one as well okay so once that is done i can press m again to see and then now i can just reduce saturation 
I think I'll reduce contrast a bit, increase shadows and increase brightness just a little bit. So that has whitened the eyes a bit. And the, ne the next thing I'm going to do is to try and make our eyes a bit more colorful here. So I'm going to go back to people mask and select people and iris here, create mask. And this time around it selects this part of our eye. Again, I'm going to modify this mask by pressing E for eraser. This time around, I'm going to increase opacity and flow. I don't need to be so careful now. And I'm just going to, you know, make sure that the excess part is not selected like so. Okay. And once that's done, I'm also going to erase this from the center of her eye here because I only want her iris. I think it's the iris. I'm not sure. Iris or pupil to get the effect I want. So if I press M, you can see what my mask looks like. And I'm just going to increase saturation a bit. I'm also going to increase my shadows a bit. Okay. So I'm also going to make sure that my selection here is, is good. Okay, so we've gone from this to this as it stands now. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go to my retouch tab here. And once I click on that, I'm then going to try and remove blemishes. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see clearly. And I'm just going to take this blemish slider all the way to the right. And when you do that, you can see that it has gotten rid of some of the blemishes on her face. I'm also going to try and push up back circles a bit, like so. And I'm going to even out the skin a little bit, like so. So if I pressed Y, you can see before and after. And I think that's pretty decent, if you ask me. Okay. If there are any things that it didn't pick up on, like this hair, like some of the lines here, all you need to do is press Q or come up here and go to draw healing mask. And then you can then use Q to, to fix some of those areas. It does a very good job as well. Think of it like your healing brush inside of Photoshop. So I'm just going to try and use it to remove any more distractions. Now, because we're deciding to stick in Capture One, I might want to do some of these in Capture One. Normally, it might be easier to do some of this in Photoshop. So, we have that cleaned up. I'm also going to try to remove some of the stray hair here using the same tool. Let's just see if it gets it done well. Not bad. I mean, if you really didn't want to go through the trouble of going into Photoshop, this might be a, a good alternative for you to use. Okay, we are almost done. The next thing I want to do is just to help to balance out her skin tone a little bit. As I can see, there are variations between her hands and her face. That's mostly because of lighting and makeup. So I'll create a new layer and I'll press B for brush. And I could just come up here and make sure that my brush is on AI select. And I want to do is select a hand like this. And select a neck as well. So by the way, there's a video where I explain how this tool works. It's a very impressive tool. And you can just click and drag and it has, it's smart enough to know where, to, where you want to select. So once you've done that, remember most times you might need to modify your mask. You can go back to your normal brush and then just paint in areas where you feel um, it didn't quite do the best job. I don't mind if it selects our bracelet, to be honest. I'm just going to paint all of that. Okay, so because of how I lit this image, most of her body here is not really lit the way same way her face is. So I'm going to go to levels and just push this up a little bit. Okay. Now, the next thing you'll notice is that her face has more saturation and better color, if I would say, than her hands. And we can also see some color variation in her hands here. So all we need to do is go to this color tool here and go to skin tone. So I'm going to go to the skin tone tab. Where is it? On that color editor, you go to skin tone. And what I need to do is click on this tool here and then select somewhere I feel like has the right tone that I like. Once you do that, come down to uniformity and push the hue all the way to the right. And once you do that, it will try to balance out the hue of everything. So as you can see, if I show you before and after, 
you see that now it has tried to balance the hue of everything to the same place I selected. Now note it's a bit more magenta now, but stay with me. I'm also going to increase saturation a bit. Now saturation, I'm increasing saturation in amount, not in uniformity. If you increase saturation in uniformity, what it does is that it tries to make everything equally as saturated. So you see when I said I didn't mind selecting that bracelet, and that's put me into trouble because when you see this, you see that it has tried to make her bracelet the same color as her skin as well. So I'm just going to try and erase that now by going to AI Eraser and just clicking on her bracelet like this. I want to make sure that I don't select the, the hand that is in between. You can click and drag or you can click and drag like this. It's smart enough to know and that's where you want to erase. So that's done a good job of erasing that. Now, I like that her hands now have a uniform tone, but what I don't still like is the color. So I'm just going to go to amount here and push it to the right, which adds green to her to her hands a bit. So instead of it to be magenta, it then adds green. I'm also going to increase saturation because I don't think it's quite there yet. And let's just turn off this whole layer and turn it back on. And you can see the difference between what we've done in our hands before and after. Okay, so the next thing I would do is create a new layer. And when I create this new layer, I'll right click on it and say copy masks from the previous layer. Okay, because I still want to do more and I need that mask again. So the same mask that was on this layer is now on this layer, but without the effects. So I'm going to go to skin tone again and then select a skin tone. I'm also going to increase saturation a bit and then let's add the greens a bit and okay i think we are starting to get to where i like i might just press my eraser erase mask and reduce the effect around our neck area here so i feel like that's starting to look unnatural okay so when i press y you can see before and after now overall i'm going to come back to my image layer here and go to my levels so i'm going to look for levels and just click this and drag it to the left a bit. Okay. So we are here now. And just like that, we've gone from this to this. So that's exactly um, how I approached fixing this image. Um, in Photoshop, I did some extra things like clean up our hair even more and do some a few other things. I think the color is still a bit different because I think when I came back from Photoshop, I then added one more of my presets called gold. So I'll right click on this and apply to new layer. I'm just going to reduce your opacity a lot by maybe to 20. So before and after. So this gives us the exact color that we want. So that just shows you that you can also stack some of these presets. You don't have to use just one. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you learned from this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. The plan is to bring you a lot more tutorial videos like this and a lot more videos generally. You can also let me know the kind of videos you'd like to see on the channel. I can't wait to bring you more. See you in the next one. Cheers.